the spokesman of the Russian president Dmitry Peskov has rejected accusations of interference in the parliamentary election held in Georgia on October 26. Georgia's president on Monday urged the West to support the opposition protests against the official results of the weekend election, in which the governing party was declared victorious amid voting irregularities and allegations of Russian meddling. We aren't meddling in Georgia's internal affairs, and we have no intention of meddling, Kremlin spokesman Peskov said, instead accusing the West of influencing the outcome of the vote. Asked about Zurabishvili's call for the Georgians to join protests, he described it as an attempt to destabilize the situation in the country. Georgian President Salome Zurabishvili, who refused to recognize the official results, told the Associated Press in an interview that the South Caucasus nation has fallen victim to Russian pressure aimed at derailing its plans to join the European Union. We've seen that Russian propaganda was directly used, said Zurabishvili, a fierce critic of the governing party. She said Georgia's government has been working hand in hand with Russia and probably had help from the Russian security services. Мы решительно отвергаем такие обвинения, они, знаете, они уже для многих стран носят стандартный характер. Чуть что сразу обвиняют Россию во вмешательстве. Нет, это не так. Никакого вмешательства не было и обвинения носят абсолютно голословный характер. Это, собственно, декларируется публично, что осуществляются попытки дестабилизации обстановки в республике. Невооруженным глазом видны также попытки вмешательства, но не со стороны России. То есть оказать влияние на исход этого голосования пробовали огромное количество сил из европейских стран, из европейских институтов различных. Никто даже не скрывал, это были публичные заявления. В отличие от Москвы, мы во внутригрузинские дела не лезем и лезть не собираемся. Это выбор грузинского народа. Сейчас очень важно, чтобы никакие третьи страны в результате эти выборы не вмешивались. Кстати, та же госпожа президент говорила о том, что она не признает результаты этих выборов. Здесь я точно не знаю, входит ли в полномочия президента Грузии признание или не признание выборов. В любом случае, все это внутри грузинское дело. Russian state TV released footage Saturday of what they said were Russian sappers searching for and detonating mines in the Kursk region. According to the video story the sappers worked on the territory from where Ukrainian forces have retreated. In Russia, air defense brought down 17 Ukrainian drones over four regions near the border, the defense ministry in Moscow reported Saturday. Also according to the Russian Defense Ministry, Moscow's troops have continued eking out battlefield gains in Ukraine's industrial east, capturing the hamlet of Oleksandropil in the Donetsk region. Russia has been conducting a ferocious months-long campaign along the eastern front in Ukraine, gradually compelling Kyiv to surrender ground, but Russian forces have struggled to push Ukrainian forces out of its Kursk border region, following an incursion almost three months ago. Чаще всего это кассетные боеприпасы, типа ПФН, типа колокольчик. Ну, желательно ликвидировать такие боеприпасы на месте, но его возможно и обезвредить. Чаще всего они без самоликвидатора лежат на замаскированной в траве. Вот вчера в середине мы там все прошли. Основная задача наша – это обезопасить освобожденные территории как бы для мирного населения. То есть мы идем, да, мы следуем, мы идем следом за штурмовыми подразделениями, обезвреживаем те, те подарки, те сюрпризы, которые нам оставил враг. Эту ямку ложат мину ловушку. Также ее взводят и на и на эту мину ловушку накладывается еще одна э, мина. В случае, если понять эту пуменку, грубо говоря, то сработает мина ловушка и получается двойной заряд. 
Ну, то есть двойной ущерб, двойную вещь человеку. Поэтому все мины уничтожаются на месте, накладны зарядом. China provides Russia only with economic aid and does not directly help in the war against Ukraine. And it is unlikely that this approach will change in the near future, even after North Korea sent troops to Russia. This opinion was expressed to 24 Canal by military expert founder of the Reactive Mail charity organization Pavel Narozny. He noted that China would most likely not send its troops to war in Ukraine as there are a number of factors that make this unlikely. First of all, this is due to the lack of economic motivation in China. China is one of the driving forces of the world economy and the DPRK famine is a standard situation. Perhaps the greatest motivation for North Koreans to go to war is the idea that Putin will pay for it somehow, either with money or goods. China is not interested in financial motivation, he explained. According to him, such a move would be quite risky for China, which is still trying to maintain a neutral position and geopolitical influence. He also explained that if Chinese troops were sent to fight in Ukraine, China would be subject to sanctions from Europe and the United States, which are its largest trading partners. I don't see any drivers for China to send its regular army to help Russia. Some mercenaries from China in Russia, that's unlikely, Narozny added. He also noted that North Korea is interested not only in financial gain, but also in combat experience. For China, this is not so important. The Chinese do not fight with troops. Their expansion occurs through loans. For example, they received a strategic port in Venezuela thanks to loans. War is too expensive for China, he explained. Recall recently Ukrainian intelligence reported the appearance of the first North Korean servicemen in the Kursk region where battles with Russian troops are underway. At the same time as foreign policy wrote, the deployment of North Korean army troops to Russia's war against Ukraine worries China. China has tried to offer rhetorical and to some extent material support to Russia without damaging its ties to the West. North Korea's actions certainly cross that line. The article says, 